In a previous video, we've given an intuition on what foreign exchange markets are all about. In particular, we talked about the foreign exchange market between the US dollar and the Chinese yuan. What we're going to do in this video is think about the same idea, but think about it in terms of graphs and the types of economic models that we're used to seeing in an introductory macroeconomics course. So what we're going to focus on in this video is the foreign exchange market, foreign exchange market for the Chinese yuan. Now we're going to think about it in terms of supply and demand curves. It can be a little bit confusing because we're going to be thinking of the price of the yuan in terms of another currency, in this case the dollar, although you could do it in terms of other currencies, the, the pound, the euro, or whatever else. Now this can be a little bit confusing because we're going to be thinking about currency on both axes. But let's first think about the horizontal axis that when we're thinking about most markets, that is our quantity axis. And here, once again, we're going to think about quantity. We're going to think about the quantity 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 of chinese of chinese yuan and then our vertical axis we're essentially going to be thinking about the price of the chinese yuan but how do you think about the price of a currency well we're going to think of it in terms of another currency and for the sake of this video that other currency is going to be the us dollar so this is going to be us us dollars dollars per Chinese, Chinese yuan. And I encourage you, pause this video, think deeply about why it's US dollars per Chinese yuan as opposed to Chinese yuan per US dollars. And think about why I put the quantity of Chinese yuan here instead of the quantity of US dollars. Because this is the foreign exchange market for the Chinese yuan. I could have done another chart where it's the foreign exchange market for the US dollar, in which case then my quantity would be US dollar. And then I would think of how much of some other currency per US dollar. So I would say maybe how much Chinese yuan per US dollar. But here's the other way around. I'm in the market for the Chinese yuan. So let's think about the supply and demand curves and which way they would work. Well, imagine that people are offering very few US dollars per Chinese yuan. Well, in that world, a lot of people might not want to convert their yuan into dollars. They might not offer them up, to, up for supply to be converted into US dollars. And so the qu quantity of Chinese yuan, if the price for the Chinese yuan is low, might be pretty low. And as the price people are willing to pay in terms of dollars goes up, well, more and more people might be willing to transact. So our supply curve, and here we're talking about the supply for Chinese yuan, is likely to increase as people are willing to pay more for those wands. And this is like many markets that we've seen before. This is just a little bit less intuitive because we're thinking about markets for one currency in terms of another currency. Now, what about the demand curve? Well, the demand curve is going to look like a lot of demand curves we've seen. If the price of a Chinese yuan is high, well, very few people are going to demand it. And as the price of the Chinese yuan in terms of dollars is lower and lower, more and more people might demand more Chinese yuan. Because like, hey, it's cheaper now in terms of US dollars. So this is what a demand curve might look like. And as you can imagine, this point is our equilibrium point. And it would tell us our equilibrium exchange rate. And so we could call that our equilibrium exchange rate. And this would be our equilibrium, our equilibrium quantity. So for example, Let's say that our equilibrium quantity, and let's say this is the quantity that changes hands in some time period. So let's say per day. Let's say our equilibrium quantity is equal to 1,000 won. 1,000 won. Let me just call this Q sub one, is 1,000 won. These numbers are very low. Real exchange markets, we might be talking about billions or tens or hundreds of billions or even sometimes trillions of various currency. But let's just say for argument, it's 1,000 won is our current equilibrium exchange quantity per day. And let's say this exchange rate, E sub one, is equal to 10 cents per won. So 10, 10 cents or one tenth of a US dollar per. Chinese yuan. So that's our current exchange rate. 
Now, let's say for some reason, all of a sudden, Americans are very, become increasingly interested in converting their currency. Maybe they want to invest in China. Maybe all of a sudden, the Chinese say, hey, Americans, come buy property in China. A lot of people are interested. Well, what would happen here? Well, then the demand for yuan would increase because you can only buy that property in China with yuan, not with US dollars. And so what would happen here? Well, your demand curve would shift to the right, like we've seen before. And so if we call this D1, then we could get to a new demand curve that might look something like this, D2. Now, what would happen if our equilibrium exchange rate doesn't change? Well, if this is our exchange rate, if this were to stay our exchange rate, now all of a sudden, a higher quantity is being demanded than is being supplied. The Americans in this situation, or it actually doesn't even have to be Americans, it could just be whoever's holding US dollars, there's demand for more than 1,000 won per day. Maybe this is 1,500 won or whatever it might be. And so what you would naturally see is that the price of the won in terms of US dollars will go up until you get to an equilibrium point. And on the first video, when we talk about the intuition of foreign exchange markets, we talk about why this would be. So you would then get to a new equilibrium right over here. This is E sub two and a new equilibrium quantity. Let's call this Q2. Our new equilibrium quantity Q2 might be 1,200 won per day versus 1,000 won per day. And our new equilibrium exchange rate, maybe this is now equal to 15 cents per won instead of 10 cents per won. So big picture, you can think of the foreign exchange market in a lot of ways like we've looked at other markets in macroeconomics. It's just a little bit, it takes a little bit of an intuitive leap to just think about the market for one currency in terms of another.